Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are back at the Pistol Caliber Carbine Course of Fire, today with an M1 carbine. I realized, I was thinking about it, and of course this was de developed to replace the pistol in service. It really is one of the original archetypes of a pistol caliber carbine. So it's a little more powerful than most, it has a longer barrel than most, but it's actually lighter than a lot of the PCCs that are out there. So I figured let's give it a run through the standardized course of fire and see how it compares to some nine millimeter guns. So uh, we have our standard course of fire here. Uh, at 25 yards, I have a dueling tree from MOA targets. Then at 35 yards, I have a mini mo. Uh, I have to knock down the head and then reset the head by hitting the center target, the center plate on that mini mo. Then I have to clear the Texas Star. In between each plate, I have to hit the full size static silhouette. And that's done to ensure that the uh, Texas Star, the redneck star, is uh, actually starting to spin. Because if, if you're too good, you can clear that star before the target actually gets moving, and then you're not really testing moving targets at all. So uh, once I finish the star, I have to go back and do the mini mo again, and then finish by doing the dueling tree one more time. Now, typically I do this with two 30 round magazines for a nine millimeter carbine. What I have today are 15 round magazines uh, for you know, standard issue for the M1 carbine as it was originally developed, and I've got three of those. So if I can't make this course of fire in 45 rounds, I time out and it's a, a DNF. So let's get going here. Shooter ready. Ready. Stand by. Yeah, I got the head. Sweet. I knew I was going to run into ammo there pretty quick. There we go. Good. Ah, I'm out. Nope. There we go. Cleaned it. Yes. With four rounds to spare. What was my time? 120.83. 120.83, all right. I really like the M1 carbine. Uh, it is hindered a bit by magazine reliability. I'm fortunate to have uh, three different magazines that work so far perfectly. Now that was at least until I dropped them in the sand. We'll see if they still work uh, next time I use them. But uh, I think, well, it was pretty cool to compare this to a nine millimeter carbine. And frankly, it did fairly well. Uh, the only other iron sighted gun we have run so far was a Hotchkiss Universal. This I did in basically 120, second, 120 seconds. The Hotchkiss Universal, I spent 150 seconds, ran out of ammo, and did not finish. So, conclusively better than a Hotchkiss Universal. Not that I think anyone was actually asking that question. But uh, I do want to point out here our Mini Mo. This is the guy that gave me the most trouble, both with this and with the Hotchkiss. Uh, and that is because this is our precision target. And with iron sights, 
it can be pretty tricky. Uh, I am never going to paint this thing. So it is gray and the target background behind it looks gray. Now the way this thing works, if you couldn't tell from the, uh, the video before, is you hit the head and it knocks down. And when you hit the center plate, it resets the head, but the center plate never goes away. So it can be really infuriating to hit here and here and here and here. And you can see the head just kind of bouncing a little bit, uh, but it requires an actual hit to the center. And when you do that, it actually works. So anyway, um, thanks to Mitch at MOA Targets for being a conniving and evil person to come up with that idea. Uh, I did pay for this target, but he gave me a little bit of a media discount on it. So if you guys are looking for a single do-it-all target for uh, fun range time or infuriating range time, that's a good one. Anyway, enough of me chit-chatting. Props to the M1 Carbine uh, for pulling it through. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.